This is lesson 11.3, which is data distributions. Our essential question is how can you interpret the distribution of data in a data set? Okay, so the first example says, what are the mean and standard deviation of the following data set? And then also what is the five number summary of the data set? So we could do this by hand or we could use technology. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. So what I did is, so that this video wasn't five hours long, is I took these numbers already and put them into just a spreadsheet real quick. So I'm gonna copy these numbers. And then I'm going to go to Desmos and I'm going to paste those numbers into Desmos. And you'll see it posts. You can also just type them into Desmos um, with brackets around them. That's giving you, so it says it's a 16 element list. I'm going to name this list. So I'm going to name it A, just so that we have a value that we can use. So if we go back to our problem, it says, what are the mean and the standard deviation of the data set? So I can type then, I can go mean of A, and it tells me that my mean is 11.625. And standard deviation is STDEVP of A is about 6.3. So we can find, so some symbols for you. So that's our symbol for mean was 11.625. Standard deviation is the sigma. So that's a sigma, was about 6.3. Okay, so then the five number summary of the data set, if you remember back to when you first learned about all these different plots, you did box plots, and a box plot needs the five, um, five number summary. So that's the minimum, the maximum, the median, and then Q1 and Q3, which is the first quartile and the third quartile. So, using the same data set here. So we can find all those values. So I can find the minimum of A. I can find the maximum of A. And then if I wanna find the first quartile, I can type quartile. So I can show you also, you can type these words. You can also go down into functions and stats, statistics. You'll see here's median, min, max, quartile, standard deviation. So if you forget what these are to type, um, it's just faster for me to type than to go to the list each time, but for the quartile. So how you put in the quartile is I would say I want to find the quartile from list A, and then you tell which quartile you want to find. So if I want to find the first Q1, I would put A and then comma 1. If I wanted to find the third quartile, I would A comma 3. I get 6, I get 15.5. If I want to find the median, of A is 12.5. Okay, so then the other thing that's super cool about Desmos, everything's super cool about Desmos, but <laughs> another thing is I can type box plot of A and it will actually graph the box and whisker box plot here. You can adjust your graph settings up here if you want to. You can make it go by ones so you can be clear where each value is. Um, but so you could read your five figure, five number figures summary from your box plot as well if it's easier just to type that and then find those values. So those are some kind of cool things that you can use Desmos for as far as this lesson goes. Okay, so we found, we can all summarize this. So we found that our min was three. We found that our max was 25. We found our Q1 to be six. Our Q3 is 15.5. And our median was 12.5. So if we wanted to do this by hand, just to refresh your memory, is you would have to take this list and you would order them from least to greatest, and then you would find the lowest number, you'd find the highest number, you'd find the middle value, then the Q1 is the median of the lower half, and the Q3 is the median of the upper half. Okay. So our next thing is talking about using appropriate statistics to compare data sets. 
So we have three situations that we could have here. Well, more than three, but these, um, if we have a curve of our data, we could have symmetric. So you can see that this is a symmetric curve. And it, you'll notice that the mean, the median, and the mode would all be close to the same value. So if that's the case, the best appropriate statistics to use um, as a measure of center and spread would be to use the mean and the standard deviation. However, you'll notice if it's skewed right or skewed left. So we name the skew based on where the tail of it is. So the tail here is to the right. So this is skewed right. This tail is on the left. So this is skewed left. You'll notice that if it's skewed right, your mean's going to be higher than your median because you have these values that are pulling that mean value up. Whereas here, the mean's going to be lower than the median because you have these values down here that are pulling it down. So because of that, the mean is actually not a good measure of center. So when we're finding the measure of center for either skewed, skewed situation, we would use the median and the IQR. So the um, IQR, just to review that, is the interquartile range, and it's the Q3 minus the Q1. So you would take those values, you would subtract them, and that's your IQR. Okay, so, oh, nope, I'm going back because I wanted to show an example of how we can use this. Okay, so I'm going to close out all of this. Okay, so I'm going to use my second data set here. Copy that. And paste. It's called, I'll just call this data set B. Okay. So if I want to determine what, if it's symmetric or skewed right or skewed left, a good um, plot to determine that is a histogram. You can do a histogram. And then the rule with histograms, you want there to be between about five and 10 boxes. So you can see right now it says that the bin width is one. So um, if you click that, or you could just put comma, if you, you want to think, okay, if we have more than one number in each bin or each bar, so I could play around with this till I get kind of the picture that I'm looking for. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's still a little bit um, spread out. So I'm going to do four and see. So you can kind of play around with those numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this gives us a better view. So you can see here that the this would be skewed left because we have the tail over here. So you can see that it's not symmetric. So that would mean that we would want to use the median. So we could find the median of B. And we would expect that the mean, so if I found the mean of B, we would expect that the mean is going to be lower than the median because of that tail to the left that's pulling it that direction. Oops. And sure enough, see, the mean is 26.6 where the median is 29. Um, and then the IQR, if you wanted to calculate that, you could say quartile of B3 minus quartile B1. And so our IQR is 12. That's kind of how you would use, um, use the histogram to find, to determine what shape your graph is, so that way you know what measure of center and spread you should use to calculate. Okay, so then if we go back here. Okay, so example three is, is the following likely to have a normal distribution? So a normal distribution, um, normal curve, also called a bell curve, is basically like what we were just talking about, it's a symmetric graph. So um, we're going to look at four examples here of and determine whether or not they would have a normal distribution. So the heights of all people in a large group. So heights, you can see there are some outliers where we have um, several people that were really tall or really short compared to the average. But in general, this would be a normal distribution. Oops. 
Okay, so this would be a normal distribution. Um, the probability of landing on each of eight equal parts of a spinner. So if you think of a spinner that's, that is divided into eight equal parts, okay, the more you spin to get a larger um, like sample size, you're going to notice it's going to start to level off even more. So this is not symmetric. This is not skewed. Um, so this would not be a normal distribution because it's going to, as the more, like I said, the more examples that we put in there, it's going to level off. Okay, our next one, the scores on an easy test. So if you think about an easy test, that's not going to be normally distributed. It's going to have more people getting high scores and fewer people getting low scores. So this would be skewed left. And then our last example is the number of children in a family. So we can see by the histogram here that um, we have a lot of people that have zero children or one children or two children. And then it we're going to have very, very few people that are not very few, but we're going to have way fewer people that have over 10 children. And it's going to get fewer as we get more and more. So um, this would be a skewed right. Okay. And so that kind of gives an gives a couple examples and how to use Desmos to find these different distributions and see what your, your um, data set looks like. So let me know if you have any questions.